All right, let's go over some notes about moles and molar conversions. Here's the essential question. What is a mole and how is it used? So let's start off with the term mole. A mole is a standard metric unit that represents a chemical quantity of a substance. So SI, by the way, just means, means standard international metric unit. And so this is, this is a quantity, it's a unit. And we designate that unit with the abbreviation MOL. And I know that's not much of an abbreviation, but whenever we have a number and the word MOL next to it, that means that it's a quantity. Specifically, that quantity represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23 number of things. But let's explore that a little bit more in depth. Now, the mole is a custom quantity, and you're used to custom quantities, you just might not realize it. For example, if I say one dozen, what do you think in your brain? Well, you're probably familiar with one dozen meaning 12 things. Now, typically we use that with eggs, but we can use that really with anything. It could be a dozen people or a dozen pairs of scissors. It doesn't really matter what it represents. That custom quantity always invokes, when I say a dozen, it always makes you think of 12 things. What about one pair? Well, you probably know that a pair equals two things, whether that be a pair of shoes, a pair of pants, a pair of scissors. Now, how about one mole? This isn't a quantity you're used to. You're, you don't automatically think of a number. But if you were to mention this to a scientist, especially a chemist, they would know that that mole, a mole of things, represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23 numbers of things. These custom quantities makes management of large of a large amount of them easier. Imagine being on a chicken farm and having to, to sell individual eggs instead of dozens of eggs. They package them in order to make them a lot easier to deal with. And the mold does the same thing for a chemist. This is that number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, written out in its long notation form. This number, we would call it 602 sextillion. And its number is practically unfathomable to us because it's not a number. It's not in the range of numbers we're used to seeing every day. I do recommend that you go and find a YouTube video called How Big is a Mole by Ted Ed. This does a really good job of explaining this number and giving some perspectives on how big it actually is. So why do we use such a big number to represent the mole? Well, the mole is typically used to represent quantities of atoms or molecules. And chemists, even dealing with small samples, deal with very large quantities of atoms and molecules. Take a look at this tiny pile of carbon right here. Now, in this tiny pile that could probably fit in my hand, there are this many atoms in there. I can't even say that number, nor do I want to have to repeat it over and over and over again. So it's a lot easier to chunk that number together and give it a new special quantity called a mole. So this is actually three moles of carbon, which is a lot easier to deal with. Now let's talk about this thing called Avogadro's number. Now Avogadro's number is just the name given to a mole. That number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is called Avogadro's number and it represents one mole. It's named based on a man we give credit to coming up with this idea of moles and molar quantities. And so Avogadro's number is just the numerical quantity of one mole, regardless of the substance. Take a look over here at the picture to the right. You see a bunch of different substances like a balloon filled with helium or a graduated cylinder filled with water or a beaker filled with sugar cubes. All of the substances in this picture represent one mole, which may seem kind of weird because they look like there's different amounts, but there's not. There are the same quantities of atoms and molecules in each of these things, even if they're different sizes. Compare that to like a dozen. If I had a dozen eggs or a dozen people, their sizes are different, but the quantities are the same. So this balloon full of helium has 602 sextillion atoms of helium in it. And this cup or this beaker full of sugar cubes has 602 sextillion molecules of sugar in it. And this tiny little beaker with copper particles in it has 602 sextillion atoms of copper in it. They all have the same quantities. So how do we get a mole? Obviously we can't just count that number. That number would take forever. We would pass multiple lifetimes before we would even be able to count that quantity. So in order to count that, in order to get a mole, what we have to use is something called a molar mass. In other words, 
in order to get that quantity, we would weigh it. Now, how do we know what the weight is of a mole? Well, the molar mass is where we're going to look. The molar mass is the total periodic table masses of all the elements in a substance. For example, if I had just the substance lithium, and I wanted to get a mole of lithium, then I would look on the periodic table. The, mo the mass of lithium, the mass of an atom of lithium is 6.941. Now, a cool trick that we can do is just changing the unit from the mass of an atom of lithium to, to grams. And if we were to just weigh out 6.94 grams of lithium, then we would have one mole. That's really neat. So the molar mass of a substance is the mass on the periodic table, and that represents one mole of that substance. We could do the same thing with a compound. Below down here is carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is made of one carbon and two oxygens. If you were to add up all of the atomic masses of those elements, then we would get the atomic mass of carbon dioxide. But if we change that atomic mass just to grams, we just change the unit to grams and weigh 40.01 grams of carbon dioxide, then we would have one mole of it. So it's a really convenient transition just using the atomic masses on the periodic table to represent the molar masses of substances. Now what is a molar mass used for? Well typically we would use a molar mass to convert between grams and moles of a substance. If we know that carbon dioxide takes 40.01 grams for every mole, then we can figure out how many moles we have, or if we had how many moles we could figure out how many grams there are. In fact, let's take a look at where we've used moles before. Remember, we learned about molarity. Now, in this example problem, we used the information found in the problem to determine the amount or the quantity of solute that we would need, 4.38 moles. Now, this quantity is not very practical because we can't measure in moles. Again, we can't count this number. It would take forever. So what we would need to do is take this number, 4.38 moles, we would have to convert it to grams and, and weigh that substance in order to get that many moles. These are two calculations that help us do that. You might want to take a moment and pause this video to write these two down. I hope you had enough time to write it down. This first calculation takes us from the mass of something and converts it into moles. So we would start with the mass of whatever we were given of a substance, and if we multiply it by one over the molar mass in parentheses, then we would be able to determine how many moles of that substance we had. On the other hand, if we knew how many moles of a substance we had, and we wanted to figure out how many grams that was, then we would times it by the molar mass over one. So the key idea in this page is you can convert between mass and moles of a substance if you know its molar mass. Now one bit of misconception that I want to make sure you avoid, don't confuse the starting or the ending masses that we're trying to figure out in the problem with the molar mass. They're not the same thing. So let's go through a few practice problems to figure this out. So here's a teacher example of a practice problem. Let's follow along with me and see if we can figure this out. It says, if the quantity of solute needed to make 2.50 liters of a 1.75 molar solution of barium nitrate is 4.38 moles, how many grams is that? So this relates to the practice problem we did in a previous module. We determined that we needed 4.38 moles in order to make this quantity, but how many grams is 4.38 moles? And so again, we would need to look at our two formulas. Are we going from the mass to moles or are we going from moles to mass? Well, we start off with moles, 4.38 moles, and we're trying to figure out how many grams that is. So we need to start with moles and go to mass. So this is the equation we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and use that equation here and plug in what we have. We have 4.38 moles. Now we need to figure out what the mass is of this for barium nitrate. In order to do that, we need to next figure out what the molar mass is. So I know barium nitrate is made of one barium, two nitrogens, and six oxygens. That's because I had to foil this two inside the nitrate. So there's two nitrates and three times two is six oxygens. Now, if I look on the periodic table and add all of those masses, then I'm gonna go ahead and get this number. 261.35 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of barium nitrate found on the periodic table. That means that I would need this many grams to have one mole. And this is gonna help me figure out how many grams I have. So if I plug that into my equation and plug this new equation into my calculator, as you see down here, I'm gonna get my answer. 
So 4.38 moles is equivalent to 1,144 grams of barium nitrate. So I would just take 1,144 gram, grams, put it in 2.5 liters of water, and I would get my barium nitrate solution. That's that concentration. All right, here is a practice for yourself. I recommend pausing this video and seeing if you can figure out this problem. Now, this isn't as complicated as a molarity problem. It's just having you convert grams of a substance to moles of a substance. Did you pause the video? I hope you tried it out yourself. Let me show you how this works. So again, we're taking grams of a substance and we're trying to convert it to moles. So we need to make sure we use the proper substance. The starting grams is over here and we wanna end up with how many moles that is. So let's plug in our starting grams, the one given to us in the problem. Again, this is not our molar mass. This is how many grams of copper two nitrate we actually have in a beaker. All right, in order to figure out how many moles that is, we need to know the molar mass of copper two nitrate. Now, luckily, the problem gave us the equation or the chemical formula for copper two nitrate, but I might need to figure that out myself on a later practice problem. So copper two nitrate is made of one copper, two nitrogens, and six oxygens. So if I find their masses on the periodic table and add the appropriate quantities of each, I'm gonna find the molar mass of that substance. And I'm going to go ahead and plug that molar mass into my equation. So it takes 188.57 grams of copper nitrate for every mole. Well, if I know that I'm starting off with 15.6 grams and it takes this many grams, I can make a prediction right now. I already know that I'm not going to have a whole mole, right? Because it takes 188 grams to have a mole, about. And I don't even have anywhere near that. So I know the amount of moles I'm going to get is going to be less than a mole. So let's go ahead and plug that into my calculator. And this is how I would do that. And my answer is less than a mole, 0 0.0827 moles. So 15.6 grams of copper two nitrate is equivalent to 0 0.0827 moles. All right, here's one more practice. This is a little bit more complicated, but this is really getting into the meat of what we need to be able to do. It says, how many grams of calcium chloride would I need to make two liters of a 1.6 molar solution? This is a tricky problem because you're going to be needing to do two different types of equations here. The first thing you're going to need to do is find the molarity or use the molarity equation to determine how many moles of a substance you have. Then you're going to need to take the moles from that original equation and convert it to grams. So let's go ahead and do this. Here's the molarity equation. And I'm starting with this equation because my problem tells me that I have two liters and 1.6 molarity or 1.6 molar. If I rearrange this equation to solve for moles, I can plug those values in there to figure out how many moles that is. So remember, moles and grams are directly related if I know the molar mass of a substance. So I'm going to take these moles and I want to convert them to grams. And so I'm going to use my second equation where I start with moles and I convert it to grams. And I need to know the molar mass in order to do that. So the molar mass is of calcium chloride. So I'm going to need to write the formula for calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is one calcium and two chlorines. So if I find the periodic table masses of all those things, then I can figure out what the molar mass is. And the molar mass is 110.98, which I'm gonna plug into my original equation, or my second equation. So if I take 3.2 moles, and I times it by how many grams there are per, per mole, then I'm gonna figure out how many grams it would take to make this solution. So it's a lot of work, but we're able to kind of combine both the molarity equations as well as molar conversions to figure that all out. So again, what I'm doing is I'm taking 355 grams of calcium chloride, I'm gonna dissolve it in two liters of water, and I'm gonna get a solution that has a molarity of 1.6 molar. All right, that's the end of the notes. I know that was a mouthful, but take a moment to review and highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, and summarize and answer the essential question. Good luck.